Hello and welcome to a new video about digital technology. Last time we talked about multiplexing. This time we are still talking about multiplexing, however I want to show you how we can achieve that we can select from more than two signals. This was what we talked last time. Eh? We have a multiplexer with two ends and an OR, and I said, okay, with this signal S, I can select which signal I want to see at the output. However, I also told you that multiplexing are multiple inputs to one output, not only two. Yeah? How to achieve this? Yeah? How to reach from one multiplexer yeah, at an M multiplexer so that we have M different inputs? Well, one possibility is use exactly those multiplexers and cascade them. Okay, so how does would this look like? Show you. Then we have here one multiplexer, second multiplexer, third multiplexer, and three multiplexers. Let's see how many signals we can reach with these two, with this. Yeah, so here we have a max, so the max, so the max. And we have here the G1 inputs, and we have here the NOT1 and the 1, and here have V1. It's always the same, like like we've used last time. Huh? Here we have the output Q, huh? and we are connecting those two things, like that. like that, and here we are reaching and we have two selection lines. One is selecting the first rows of multipliers, this is S0, one is selecting the second column of multipliers. S1. Okay, so we have here our inputs, inputs I0, I1, I2, and I3. And now let's think what is appearing at the output Q if we have different S. Yeah? So let's think about what we have if we have somewhere. S0, S1, and here we write down which signal we are reaching at Q. All right? So let's have a look at all possible combinations. So we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. If both are 0, eh, then here we would have I0 and here we would have I2. And here we would select I0. So here I0 is appearing. Because here we select here with I0, here's I2, and here we have I0 and I2, and I select I0. Okay. And here we have here I0 and here I2. However, I select here a different one, this is I2. Alright? This one, yeah? I select here I1 and I3, and here I select I1. And this I select I1 and I3, and here I select I3. So I can really select which, which things I want to see at the output, and on the, of the combination of those things, yeah? I, can reach, I can reach the output. Yeah? I can reach the corresponding output. This is how this thing is working, all right? So simply cascade more than one multiplexer, two multiplex, and cascade them. And then suddenly you can select. Okay? You can extend this logic to more inputs. There is, of course, a symbol for this. Yeah? The symbol for this looks like that. 
it somehow shows a little bit the internal working principle. So we have here node 1, 1, node 2, 2. If we 1 and we 2, this is node 3, 3 and we 3. Here we would have Q. Here we have the input. So I0, I1, I2, I3 and here there is this header with the selection line, you write max. Here we have the two selection lines. Here we have S0 and S1. And this is working on 1 and 2 and this is working on 3. Okay, so this shows how those things are selected. This, this is the symbol. Of exactly this solution, yeah? cascading, cascading things. Yeah? There would be also another solution, a much a straightforward solution. Yeah? So if we we exactly make it like that, yeah? <laughs> exactly like that. However, yeah? with more ends, So we have a bigger end blocks. We have one big OR block. We are connecting those end blocks to one OR block. This here would be the output Q. We have here at every end we have an input so we have the inputs I0, I1, I2 and I3 and we have two selection lines S0 and S1 And we make it like that, that S0 is connected like that, S1 is connected like that, so that we have enough AND blocks for every possible combinations of S0 and S1. Yeah? So here I0 will only appear at the output if S1 and S0 is 0. Exactly like this. Yeah. Here I1 will appear at the output of this end block if S0 is 0 yeah, and S1 is... Yeah. So let's make also a table S0, S1 and Q. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. So here, if both are zero, we will appear I zero. Yeah? If both are one, we will appear I three. If this is S is zero, here is I two. Yeah? And if S one is zero, here is I one. Exactly the same function. Yeah? And also the symbol shows a little bit how this is working. We have the four inputs. I1, 
I zero, I one, I two, I three. All right, we have one output, Q. And we have the selection inputs. This again drawn like that. This is again a multiplexer. And here we have the selection line one and the selection line two. And this is S0 and S1. And here we have to say node one and node two. Yeah. Here we have to say uh, it's in this case it's this one one and not two right and then we have this one this is not one and two and then we have this one one and one a uh, one and two yeah? and here is the output resulting from one and two this is the symbol of this huh? symbol. That's another variant of the M multiplex. We can extend this by simply making the ends bigger. Right? The result is always the same. With those selection lines, I can select which, which input I want to have. And this is exactly what multiplexing is about. Yeah? So now we can multiplex for a lot of signals, usually two raised by the power of something, because every new selection line offers double the choices, like in the binary system. All right, so this is how an IM multiplexer is working. Now we can multiplex. We said, okay, we need at the other side, we need a demultiplexer to divide this also to separate lines. How a demultiplexer is working, I only show an M demultiplexer. How this is working, I will show in next video. Right? So next video, demultiplexing. For this video, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.